Gear up for Bullet Train as you surely don't want to miss this one with Brad Pitt on board. Yes, the superstar has returned to the big screen after three years. So I quickly want to cut across to our entertainment editor Tushar Joshi who watched the screening to give you the lowdown on this action comedy film. Tushar, how is the movie? Has Brad Pitt managed to turn heads as he has been doing off screen while promoting Bullet Train in Berlin, Paris as well as in LA? Depali, I think Brad Pitt has not only managed to turn our heads, but he has actually given us a crazy head rush in the film. Like its title, the entire film is set in a train. And when it's set in a train, and when you have somebody like Brad Pitt, who's headlining this massive project, things only get interesting. I mean, what a crazy ride, no pun intended, is the film. It's colorful, it's full of action, it's set in Japan, and it's also based on a Japanese novel. And when we have uh, action stars like, uh, you know, you have Brad Pitt, who is not technically an action star, but he's doing crazy action scenes in this. There are also cameos by, uh, there's Ryan Gosling doing a surprise cameo. There is Channing Tatum doing a hilarious cameo in the film, which I thought was outstanding. And the fact that we are seeing Brad Pitt after a long time, after once upon a time in Hollywood, uh, where he was with Quentin Tarantino, it's interesting to see how Brad has actually reinvented himself in the film uh, and he being the highlight of the film there are also sent there are also peripheral characters supporting cast in the film which makes the film so much fun uh, i think it's one of the most fun film experiences you will have this year talk to me about the action in the film does it keep you on the edge of your seat I think it not only keeps you on the edge of your seat, but it actually pushes you over and makes you tumble and fall because you're literally spellbound by the way the action scenes have been choreographed. You know, when you have action scenes happening in a compact place like a train, there is only so much you can do. But the scenes are so uh, precise, so crisp. The action is like you haven't seen before. Uh, there is this one sequence between Brad Pitt uh, and the supporting cast, which I think was outstanding where there's a huge massive hole that's uh, broken into the train and you see them tumble and then you see them clutch and try to save their dear lives. Um, I thought that was a genius way of putting action uh, scenes together. And the action scenes are a highlight because they're also interwoven with a lot of comedy, uh, with a lot of sarcasm, with a lot of wit. Um, supporting actors like Joey King, who is brilliant in the film. She's fabulous. Then there is Aaron Taylor, who is again outstanding in the film. All of these people, along with Brad Pitt, make this experience such a thrill ride. What about the members of the cast? I mean, uh, uh, you know, how have Aaron Taylor, Johnson and uh, Joey King performed? And what exactly is Sandra Bullock's role in the film? Dipali, the film is being directed by David Leash, who's directed Deadpool 2. And what is interesting about him is the fact that how he has managed to put together this supporting cast along with Brad Pitt. There is... Joy King, obviously, we know her. Uh, she's fantastic in the film. I mean, she has a completely different look from what we've seen her do. And her character is a complete opposite to the way she looks in the film. We have Aaron Taylor Johnson, who we've all grown to love, and we know him for his swag. He and Brian Henry have this amazing chemistry in the film. In fact, they play off each other's energy throughout the film. They're called Lemon and Tangerine very quirky names and very quirky personalities and they both have some amazing dialogues in the film their chemistry their equation and the way they have this almost tom and jerry equation makes makes those scenes so much better and they actually stand out in what's happening throughout the film and when they actually get to meet Brad Pitt, it's outstanding it's it's another level stuff you know, when I heard Sandra Bullock is a part of this film, I was super excited. And we've just heard about the fact that this might be one of her last films. She's uh, getting into semi-retirement. And any time a Sandra Bullock film is announced, there is so much excitement around it, right? So the makers of the film have kept Sandra's role also a big secret. And there's a reason why. Because you actually get to see Sandra only towards the end of the film. You keep hearing her having conversations with Brad Pitt over the phone. Uh, to sum up the film in a line, uh, to sum up the plot of the film in a line, Brad Pitt is supposed to take a briefcase from the train and disembark from it. That's his job. Now he's an assassin. But when he jumps onto the train, there is so much that happens with him and the briefcase. And there is Sandra Bullock giving him instructions over the phone. And Sandra Bullock's voice is iconic. You mean, you can't miss it. Her lines with Brad Pitt, the way they have this repertoire going on, is outstanding. It's classic Sandra and uh, Brad speaking. I just wish we had more of 
uh, screen time with Sandra where we get to see her and not just hear her voice. Absolutely, Tushar, I agree with you. But you know, if you could give our viewers a sense of how the film is overall and how many stars would you give it? You know, for those who want to experience something that is out of the box, something that is stylish, something that is uh, very classy, it's very sexy. The action in the film is very sexy. It's almost shot like a Japanese anime film. Uh, there are a lot of pop culture references. There is Bad Bunny, who's a very popular rapper, uh, who makes uh, uh, almost a cameo sort of a role in the film. The clothes, uh, the costume design is very colorful. The set design is very colorful. Uh, and there are so many uh, references to Japanese culture that are woven into the film. You get to see the landscape a bit. You get to hear sounds that are very synonymous with Japan. Uh, you get to also see uh, how, what is the life of an average Japanese guy. So for those who enjoyed films like, say, A Kill Bill, which again was a very uh, Southeast Asian or Japanese cultural film where you had that sort of action. This is a thrill ride. And when you have one of the world's biggest uh, superstars headlining in Brad Pitt, I think it's oh, it only adds to the fun. It adds to the glamour. It adds to the excitement. Uh, there is a lot running on Bullet Train because the early reviews uh, have been very positive and fans are super excited because it's an action film. It does full justice to the genre. The only place where the film sort of falters or when it stumbles a bit or it derails somehow is the comic timing, is the comedy. The jokes are a flat in places. The characters somehow uh, end up saying the same things over and over again. But when the action kicks in and when Brad Pitt is doing all these crazy action scenes, the tempo just takes up and the train picks up space. All right. So overall, how many stars would you give it to Tushar? I'm actually excited to watch this film. I think, Dipali, you must watch the film. Uh, I know you're a Sandra Bullock fan. You will absolutely enjoy this, even though you would want to see her uh, more on the screen that she get to hear her. I think I, will, I would have given it a higher rating uh, if uh, the gone. pace of the film and the comedy in the film would have been better. But still, Bullet Train is a solid, uh, it's a Pesa Basul film, it's a masala film in the sense that it promises what it uh, set out to deliver. Uh, I'm going with 3.5. Uh, it's it's definitely recommended for those who enjoy this sort of a head rush, uh, an action film that doesn't disappoint at all. All right, so our entertainment editor Tushar Joshi has given Bullet Train three and a half stars out of five.